Hey guys, Pro 1701 here, and today we're continuing our ranking of Doctor Who seasons and series from classic and modern Who from worst to best. And today we are at number 14 on the list, and that is season 22, Colin Baker's first full season. Look at that glorious artwork by Lee Binding. I am surprised how impressed I was with this one. Getting this box set, this was the first time I had seen the whole season. I had seen about half of these episodes before, but I had never, I hadn't seen even those in a while. Because I didn't own any of season 22 on DVD, none. So I had seen Vengeance, Two Doctors, and Revelations, but it had been a long time, and I would never seen any of the others. And <clears throat> my goodness, it's such a fun season. It is a violent season. The Sixth Doctor can be antagonistic sometimes, and him and Perry don't always get along the best. I will admit I like the way Colin plays the role a little better in Season 23, and I like his relationship with Perry a little better in Season 23. But I still enjoy them here, and I like the stories. Attack of the Cybermen is a good Cybermen story. It does a lot of neat things. It's nice to see them back on Telos. I like how it focuses on the, the, the two guys who are working to escape from kind of the work camps on Telos and the, the whole twist going on with them. Uh, my Really my only big issue is the, the little ice women, the women that are dressed up as the ice creatures. I don't really think that's realized well on screen and it seems like it doesn't really need to be there. I don't really get into that. But other than that, I actually really enjoyed Attack of the Cybermen. I liked seeing Litten back from Resurrection of the Daleks. Um, was it Light Litton or Lighten? I forget. And seeing the process of people being converted into Cybermen on the background, especially with Litton right there at the end when he's barely maintaining control of himself, I think that's pretty graphic, especially for, cla for classic Doctor Who. It's pretty graphic and interesting to see the process at work there. I, uh, I enjoy Attack of the Cybermen. Vengeance on Veros is really good, great commentary. Uh, I like how it predicts uh, reality TV and everyone just being glued to the television. Uh, of course, people have been saying glued to the television for decades, but the way it re predicts reality TV and the voting, I like that. Uh, some of the imagery in it's very cool. I really like the cliffhanger at the end of part one uh, with the doctor just laying on the ground thinking he's in a desert passing out. One, the, that, that look on his face when it does that shot of him where he looks like he's dead is... A really good shot plus how it has the desert there but you can kind of see the hallway through the desert like it's a projection that's a pretty pretty cool effect for classic doctor who i like that i like most of this story except for um the the whole perry turning into a bird thing is kind of weird uh but i like most of the other that and uh john wayne's son's character is kind of needlessly there he doesn't really do much he's just kind of there as a character. Same thing for his girlfriend slash wife or whatever. They're just kind of there. They don't really do a lot. They're a bit pointless. Uh, the guy playing the governor does a really good job. It's got Syl in it. I like Syl. Syl is fantastic. The actor who plays Syl does such a good job. Syl's just such a well-conceived, well-executed, well-acted character. He is one of the truly great villains of Doctor Who, especially since He's not like a take over the world, you know, evil person. He's just a greedy capitalist executive, basically. <laughs> I mean, we have people just like Syl running around the world all over the place today. <laughs> That's one of the reasons inflation is so bad. So yeah, I definitely like Vengeance. Vengeance is uh, stuff. A lot of the stuff in Vengeance is very applicable to now, which I like. And then I love Mark of the Ronnie. Mark of the Ronnie is uh, quite possibly my favorite Colin episode. I think it's like basically the only Colin historical from his TV run. It really is a good historical. I love the location shooting for it. Looks really good. The sets look pretty good too. I love the Ronnie's TARDIS. The Ronnie's TARDIS is phenomenal. I would love to see another TARDIS like that. It does look like a more advanced version of the Doctor's TARDIS. Like, a, it's a TARDIS, but it's a way more advanced TARDIS than the Doctor's TARDIS. Something the modern show forgets where anytime you see a TARDIS, it looks a lot, a lot like a classic TARDIS, like the Doctor's classic TARDIS. They seem to forget the Doctor had an old beat up TARDIS. But the Ronnie's TARDIS looks 
you know, way more advanced. Like it's the Lamborghini to his, you know, Toyota Corolla. <laughs> so that, yeah, that I like. Um, Kato Mara is doing a fantastic job here. I love watching Kato Mara as the Rami in either of her stories. She's a lot of fun to watch. I like the fact her and the master don't get on well. Uh, I love the fact that they're, it's like they're kind of respectful for each other, but you can tell they don't really like working together. Um, they respect each other's gifts, I guess, and the things they can do. But I love the fact that really Mark and Ronnie's what proved to me that Ronnie is more a brain, not a brawn type. Like, she's smart, but she'll kind of hide in the shadows. She'll get her hands dirty if she has to, but she likes to pull the strings only come out when she knows she's going to win. She's very much the brain. She's not a fighter. She's a thinker. And this episode really encapsulates that to me more than time did. I really realized that when I was watching this story for the first time. And the incidental music's good. I really like the incidental music in this one. I also enjoy uh, The Two Doctors. It's nice having Troughton back. I love Patrick Troughton. And it's nice having Jamie back. I like me some Fraser Hines. And it's like they've never been gone. They are just phenomenal together. They are just doing what they do best. You know, the second Doctor and Jamie. I like how the beginning of the story is kind of look like a little mini episode with the second Doctor and Jamie, the first few minutes there, with them on the base talking to Destari. It's really nice. I like uh, the location work. I don't really like the part at the Hacienda as much, but the part when they're in, in the town running around at the end of part three, it's really cool location work. I like that the sixth Doctor and Jamie get on really well. That's awesome. And of course, it's always great to have Troutman back. Now, I don't like the Doctor becoming an angergram. I don't really care for that. I really don't like how it's played for laughs. I hate that whole scene in the restaurant. I mean, it's got a couple of chuckle parts in it. And then the waiter dying is the... Oh, his over-the-top death scene is... It's frustratingly annoying. That kind of drags the whole story down for me. I mean, it is a little longer than it needs to be, but it is... That waiter's death scene, really. Yeah. But other than that, I, I, I enjoy it. Uh, the Suntarans aren't, definitely aren't the best Suntarans in the series, but they're great. And I love that Suntaran theme. There's some really good incidental music in this, but that Suntaran theme in The Two Doctors is tops. One of the best pieces of music to come out of Doctor Who. To come out of Classic Who especially, but even to come out of Doctor Who. It's really impressive. I love that theme. It just gets my blood pumping every time I'm listening to it. I love it. it. Sounds epic. It does. It has this very epic sound to it. And I love seeing um, uh, the names escaping me. The woman from Blake 7 who's playing in it as uh, the female Andrew Graham that's been worked on. Her name's popping out of my head. She does a really good job, though. I like her uh, playing the, in this one as well. So, yeah, I really like the two doctors. Time Lash isn't the best it is the weakest of the season i think i can appreciate it a little more because i did watch it for the first time with the updated effects on and i do think the updated effects do carry it a little bit they do kind of piggyback it up a little bit uh because i have seen the clips of it with the regular effects on youtube and yeah it, it's pretty rough but the updated effects do help it a bit uh the story again it's not the best it's the weakest of the season but it's with the updated effects, it's perfectly rewatchable. Although that scene when the Doctor is in the Time Lash, even with the updated effects, it just goes on too long. I wouldn't have minded that scene if it was shorter, but it quickly gets boring where you're like, all right, get the crystals, let's go. And then, of course, watching Paul Darrow just chew the scenery is oh so much fun. Oh so much fun to watch, always. And then the Borad makeup looks really good. I have to admit that. The Borad's makeup looks fantastic i have to give it that that's conceived and executed really well um and the revelations of the daleks like all of the 80s dalek story is good uh terry malloy is back at stavros he does a great job uh my only real issue is it has some stuff in there that doesn't need to be in there like the the kind of pervy doctor and his nurse that's in love with him they don't even need to be there you gotta cut them right out and save some time but the, uh, the glass Dalek, you know, the girl finding her father partly converted to a Dalek, the, the makeup on that, the acting on that, the execution and directing of that scene is really well done. Um, Perry and the Doctor are both good in it, although the cliffhanger with the, the statue falling on the Doctor looks really fake and forced, and I didn't really care for that. 
I like uh, the the guy who's basically the assassin, the old knight. He's pretty cool. The actor playing him does a good job. Him and his helper, his very loyal helper, are both portrayed very well, written very well. I actually liked both of them. It's cool seeing Davros get his hand blown up. That's pretty neat. Um, I like Revelation of the Dalek. It's really good. That's And that's the thing with this story. There's no really bad stories. The worst is Time Lash. I don't think Time Lash is bad, especially with the updated effects. I think it's just okay. So all of the stories range from okay to really, really good. I don't know if there's any masterpieces in here either, but there's Mark of the Ronnie's pretty close. Uh, but if it, it is a phenomenally good season, then that's why it ranks so high. It's six stories, and they're all varying degrees from decent to really good. So that's the reason why it's up here. And again, maybe it's because I've watched it so recently, it's still fresh on my mind. Uh, but I enjoy it. I enjoy the violent nature of it a lot of times. I enjoy a lot of the incidental music. Um, I enjoy a lot of the violence and the darkness. It, it's, it, it's a really good season of Doctor Who. So much better than what we would get with season 23 with the higher-ups messing with it. I really wish we'd gotten the original season 23. I think that would have been better than what we got for trial. So, season 22, what do you think of it? Comment down below and let me know. And don't forget all the other fun things to do, clicking the subscribe button and the like button. And down in the details, you got all the stuff like the links to the Patreon, the links to the uh, Amazon wish list, and the P.O. box is down there as well if you'd like to send anything. I want to give a shout out to Stephen Crane, one of my top tier patrons. I appreciate his support, as I do the support of all of my patrons. Most importantly, thank you for watching.